Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a boatload of ideas about ways to use ink in your journal pages and other mixed media projects. Now, you can use India ink, you can use fountain pen ink, and you can pretty much use any loose medium that you like, such as a watercolor would probably work with most of these techniques. I am going to be using today a plant-based ink that is made out of onion skins. And that is because I have a new online course going live on Sunday. And it's going to be about how to make an art journal using papers that have been echo printed with red and yellow onion skins. And there's a bonus tutorial about how to make the plant-based onion skin ink. So please stay tuned for that. I'll be back Sunday to say some more. And please join me near the end of this video because I'm going to be giving away this mini vintage paper pack for painting on. And I'll be telling you more about that. In the meantime, if you like journal arts, altered books, vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Now let's go make stuff. Let me start by saying, please do not put this ink in a fountain pen. It will not do your feed any favors. So that's probably the one thing you shouldn't do with this ink. What you can do is use a dip pen. Or some of you may have a bamboo dip pen. If you don't, you can make one out of a brochette, a, sort, a wooden skewer. Here's one that I'm using. This is a cuticle stick and it's got a pointy end and this flat end. So you can get a couple of different lines with that. And this twig. Let's look at all, uh, how those work by doing some mark making. Mark making is a fun way to fill up space and add details to your what you're working on. You can do some hatching. Do some cross hatching. So that's the bamboo dip pen. Here is the cuticle stick. And with the narrow end, I'm gonna make some squiggles here. And here's the broad end. And you can see that it gives you a lot more there. You could do some stippling. So here's the twig. And this, this makes a super fun effect. Just dipping it into the ink and making these almost calligraph calligraphic calligraphic gestures. That would be a really fun way to fill up a space. If you like lettering, you can use a dip pen like this. Another mark-making technique is to create faux coffee rings. 
I'm using this uh, miniature, this, this Japanese teacup. But you can use anything like uh, that has a round top to it. Like the top of a water bottle or a makeup jar. And there you go. That's one of my favorites. Don't forget splatters. I'm using a toothbrush for this one. I'm filling up my, my brush. Make, clearing a space here because it makes a lot of itself. And there we go. If you have seen my art journal page videos, then you know that one of my favorite messy mixed media techniques is using ink in a, a spritzer or a mini mister. I uh, get these at craft supply stores, but you can also get them at just the, the supermarket or the big box store. Now, I have just put a small amount of ink and then I diluted it with quite a bit of water and see what happens. That's a nice fine mist. You can make it more splotchy. Or you can make it into a straight up drizzle. I'm going to just add this all across the top here and then tilt my paper. Now you can either let it run on its own or you can help it along a little bit with some water. It's gonna move your drizzles all around the page. Let's look at using ink with the stencil. Here I'm using a blending tool And I'm just daubing, pouncing, and that's the result there. If you don't have a blending tool, you can use a sponge, like a craft sponge or a makeup sponge. It will do the job just as well. Let's talk about brushwork because ink can be used very much like a paint. And in that it can be made into different tones and shades. Here I've got just the straight ink and it is a very intense color indeed. And then I've diluted it all the way around so that I have, it's just this ink with different amounts of water and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So that you've, can make a lot of different tones for different effects. Here's the straight. So now you can use these different colors for to add tones perhaps to something that you've already drawn or you could use it to actually draw with itself for some rough fun rough drawing like this You could use it in another project using other paints and inks, or you could even do a monochromatic study. That would be fun. Let's look at some wet on wet techniques. And that just means that instead of a dry piece of paper, I'm going to paint it with some water. So wet on wet. 
Now I'm going to take another brush and dip it into the, the ink and just tap it into the water. And it is really, really fun and beautiful. Let's look at another one over here. And on this one, I'm just going to add a line. And let that spread. Basically, the ink does not want to leave where the water is. So, let's see. I'm going to draw an egg shape here with the water. And now I'm going to just fill that in You see, it doesn't really want to leave the parameters of the water. You can go in and then pull that out with some water, like this. This is just some water on a brush, and it will follow. Just making a little spiral there and actually when this dries it almost looks like a cousin of paper marbling i'll show you that when they're dry and finally remember splatters let's do some splatters and let those grow This could easily be turned into a galaxy of sorts. This ink likes to pool, which is kind of different than paints, which tend to be more even. But I actually like that because as that dries, you're just going to get a lot of different movement and texture because of where it is starting to pool. I'm going to do a little abstract painting with some of these shades and washes. And all I'm doing is moving the ink wash around on the page. And then I'm going to bring a darker one and just do some little touches there. So this is a combination of uh, working on wet on dry paper and wet on wet. splatters and after that's dry I'm gonna come back and show you what we're gonna do with it you can also paint on top of text I'm using vintage paper but use what you've got a dictionary page would look good basically any kind of print would look good you know even from a romance novel as long as it's not glossy if you paint on it it's gonna look really really cool
Because painting on old text looks so very cool, I am going to give away a chance to win a mini paper parcel. It's going to have this old paper from 1739. And it's uh, got a lot of linen in there, so it will give an interesting result. Here's a French dictionary page from 1826 and a French legal document from 1838. A handwritten ledger page from 1896, and it's going to come folded in half because it's really big. Finally, this not at all vintage piece of heavy uh, cotton rag watercolor paper. It's 300 GSM. has really cool texture. So if you'd like a chance to get this, just leave me a question or a comment below this video. I will choose a name at random on Sunday from those comments and questions and let you know. Here are some of those wet on wet abstract techniques. And this is what they look like when they dried. They are gorgeous. That's it. Those are my ideas. Please join me Sunday when I will be back with some details about this online course for making an art journal with echo printed onion skins and how to make onion skin ink. Until then, go find yourself some ink and get up and go make something.